Hello YouTube, I'm your host, The Crimson Warrior, and today I'm bringing to you my Salman Great deck profile and tournament report. Let's get into it, shall we? Alright guys, let's dig right into it, starting with the main. So first we're going to start off with three Salman Great Gazelle, self-explanatory, starts our whole deck, gets everything going. Foolish Burial on Legs, and you can search for it about 12 different ways in the deck almost. Then, I play Triple Spinny. Um, I like Triple Spinny. I've never liked it when I've cut it down to two. I understand why others have started to cut it down to two. But he has never screwed me over when I see him, and I'm always happy to discard him. And there's so many discard effects in this deck that I'd just rather have more targets to discard. Then... Double Foxy. Um, I play Double Foxy because its first effect never gets me anything, and for its second effect, I mainly search it out if I need to use its second effect. Um, and that's it for the level 3 package. Next, we're going to go One Lady Debug. Search, obvious, still good, and side for game 2 most of the time. Two Foul. Great for extending, chain blocking, and for our rank four package which is how you will be winning the game most of the time in good Salman great games. Next up we play the one Falco and the one Jag. Recycling and recycling obvious. Um, not much to say about that. Now for the hand trap lineup. I play triple ash blossom. Don't mind my mix match rarity. Still love all of my Ash Blossoms still works the same as the other two. Um, still want to find a copy of that if I can, though. Um, this can be... All of these can be anything you want. Um, next up, Triple Phantasme. I understand not everyone can afford Phantasme. You do not have to run Phantasme. Um, Effect Veiler, Solemn Strikes, honestly... Upstart Goblin and Pot of Desires can all be replacements for this card. This is just consistency, and this deck has a huge problem with putting out bigger monsters on board. So building the deck without this, you just need to find out how to get bigger monsters on board and how to keep your consistency up. But it is not necessary. You do not need this. Next up, I play the double Ghost Ogre. Um, this is very useful at my locals. It always comes through at me, for me, at two. Not much else to say. I, we do have a Pendulum player um, against Salaman Great hitting the Gazelle, or the Balanix when it activates effects to slow down their turn is overall just a hilarious thing to do. Um, not much else to say about that. Now to get into the spells, Triple Circle, obvious, great card. Triple, Synap Mining. Again, this is not necessary, but it helps significantly and also makes our normal summon unnecessary. So that if you want to side cards like Sphered Mode and Denko Seca, um, you need this card. If you don't want to side extra normal summon monsters, you don't need this card, um, but you need to up your consistency either by maxing out all on Foxy and Spinny and and then I guess Upstart and Foolish for more consistency um, but really just helps get your plays going without your normal summon because Gazelle chains its effect to the monster hitting the grave and so you search Gazelle out with this and then just go off from there. Next we play Tripled Called By we're combo deck, and this hurts everything. Um, Rogue does not like this. No one likes this. Salad doesn't like this. It hits everything. Um, if you're not running three, I don't know why you're not. It's very staple at this point, and easy side fodder, because you do not want to be siding out any of your salad cards. Your hand traps and called by the grave and other techs are more so what you want to do. Your main engine, not so much. Next up, we play double... Twin Twister. Um, I have lost terribly to just floodgates, so these have gone from the side to the main. I had to work them in, wiggle them in, but I think it's necessary. 
and it's easy side if your opponent doesn't run any back row. And since you only run two, it's not much of a brick. Next up, the one Sanctuary. Brick, please don't draw this. Search it off of Valenix, but sometimes we are just unlucky. And such is Yu-Gi-Oh! Such is life. Then there is Will of the Salaman Great. I used to run this at two. I cut it down for a copy of the Twin Twisters. I just needed Twin Twisters more than I needed Will. But uh, Will is a great card to play at two, and if you're not running... Phantasme, um, this is a great card to bump up for consistency as well. Then the one Foolish, um, everything in this deck loves to be in Grave, and your whole deck wants to be in Grave by like the third or fourth turn if the game has lasted that long, so it just helps get you there and makes it so Gazelle and Mirage Stallio don't have to do as much work. Next up, Triple Imperm. Not necessary, but highly effective and helpful. Um, three pi called by the grave is running everywhere, and you don't want to deal with it. So free negates. These obviously can be effect veilers if you don't have access, or yeah, honestly, effect veilers. That's all you can really replace those with. And the one rage and the one roar. Um, obvious. You can run an extra copy of either depending on what you're trying to do. Um, another rage for pendulums, another roar for just general negates, and if you draw into it. I used to run the two roar, but uh, yeah, I needed space for twin twisters, so that's what came out. And that's it for the main board. Next up for the extra deck, we start with triple Balenix. Protection starts us link one everything you could ever want. Run three. Um, the people who say you can run two are wrong. I don't care what they say. Triple Sunlight Wolf. No arguments here. This is the engine that keeps the deck going. Um, you're constantly recycling this with Jack Jaguar. You always want to be recycling this with Jack Jaguar. Um, a lot of people try to recycle the Mirage Stallio with the Jag. Unless that is absolutely necessary, I would not recommend it. We always want to be going into more Sunlight Wolves. Um, more on that in a minute as well. Next up, Salaman Great Heat Leo, OTK ability, and back row removal. I honestly forgot about his back row removal effect for the longest time until another Salad player did it to me. Um, I guess that's just better player and me... Being new to the deck, I've only been playing for two months since I've hopped back into the game. Next up, one Nightmare Phoenix. Back row removal, easy nightmare to go into. Works under Mirage Stallio, because Mirage Stallio locks you into fire monsters and their effects. So he's our one nightmare. Next up, Boralode. Um, I'm trying to replace this with Mech Knight Avermax. He's a much better boss monster in my opinion. Um, pick up your Mech Knight Avermax before it gets more expensive than it is because it's a really good card and it's really hard to get over. And I've had it dropped against me and just that be game because it's basically like a construct, but a Link 4. So easier to summon. Next up, Double Mirage Stallio. Um, we play double because it's necessary. You're constantly recycling the Sunlight Wolf with Jack Jaguar, and you really don't want to be caught without a Mirage Stallio, especially when you can make a rank 3 play, and this is all you can make. This is our only rank 3, so I've always wanted to. Even getting better at the resource management in this game, there's been late game scenarios where I've needed to extend harder and the having two provides for that so I recommend running two. Next up this is how you win games with salad. You're not really winning games with the salad monsters as much as I'd love to say that. Um, they're all incredibly weak and you need answers for the meta. Abyss Dweller turns off Orcist, turns off the mirror match, is just a great card in general against Rogue. And then Baguska works even better against the Mirror Match. Um, not so great against Orcus. I tried making it against Orcus today. It didn't work out so great uh, going to the Dweller against them. But you learn as you go. Next up, the one Violite over Tech Chimera. I run the one Violite in the main extra deck um, just because of the side deck, and you'll see why. 
All right, now for the extra deck. I play double Super Poly. This card is broken. Um, we don't really use it for the Violet Chimera, to be <laughs> honest with you. We use it for this. He is broken, and we all summon Dark's Pendulums, end on Dark Boards, Orcists, ends on Dark Boards. Most rogue decks that I know tend to end on Dark Boards, and it just works almost against anything. It's great. Next up, double Pankratops. Needed to make room, so drop this guy to one. Run three if you want to. It's a great card. Double Gamma Seal. This has come back in after dropping it because I've had trouble with certain boss monsters walking around them when I get screwed over on the dice roll. And so this has gone back in for when I know I'm going turn two and I know they're going to be setting up a boss monster I want to get rid of. And this guy with Pankratops can normally bait out three negates pretty quickly, so seeing these two together is one of my favorite things. Next up, triple evenly matched for when I'm forced to go second. Great for breaking boards. Uh, you can replace this with sphere mode if you like, but my problem that I noticed wasn't huge monster boards, but that's probably because I don't fight against Danger Thunder Dragon, because no one at our locals plays it really. But Altergeist and their back row and Sky Striker and theirs, just being able to either bait the negates with this and actually be able to play your cards or wipe out their field and continue to just build advantage is necessary and great for turn, turn two as well. The third copy of Twin Twisters, uh, necessary, extra for when we're getting floodgated out. It's just great. Um, th this deck loses to there can be only one. And other floodgates, and we just want to get rid of that because, no, let's play Yu-Gi-Oh! instead of no interaction games, please. This is why people quit. Um, next up, Imperial Order. Just turns off spell cards, auto win button against Sky Striker, couple rogue decks, Pendulum. Not much else to say. And then last up, my spicy tech, Denko Seca. I run Denko Seca because of getting wrecked by Altergeist last weekend and not wanting to deal with it ever again. If I see Altergeist again, or if I don't see Altergeist again, this will probably come out for something else, probably Sphere Mode, so I can start getting rid of Negate Boards if that becomes a problem. But other than that, this can be anything you want. Thanks for listening in, guys. And now to give you guys the tournament report. Today was, I went 2-2, and it was a pretty awesome day, not to mind you. Round 1, I got the personal pleasure of losing against trains. Game 1, my opponent opened the nuts. I went first, established my 3 negate board of Ash, Roar, and uh, I think Impermanence as well. And he just walked through it like it was nothing and proceeded to out-resource me. Uh, game two, I just bricked, and he proceeded to do the same thing as game one and just locked me out. Next uh, game, it was against Pendulum. Um, he just set up a jackal and won off of one jackal and my bad hand. Game two, I set up and I locked him out, and he bricked with three Denko, so he was unable to special summon and just scooped to next game, basically. Game 3, I rode Super Poly all the way to victory. That card is broken. I Super Polyed his Endymion and his, um, his Master Endymion and his Servant, and then just proceeded to chip away his resources and use Rage to beat him because he didn't know that Rage could still work without a Link Summoned... Link summon Salaman Great Monster on field, so I just used its second effect to tribute, target, destroy his low scale, and that ended his game right there. Next, I went up against Destiny Hero. Um, not much to say there. It was Destiny Hero, and he didn't get anything spicy out against me, so I kind of just out-resourced him and won the game via that way. 
Then game three was the mirror match. My lord, was this sloppy and bad. Game one, he misplayed bad and admitted to it because I could see a couple things didn't go right for him on his turn one board, and I proceeded to lock him out of the game with resources. After that, though, game two, he sided and sanctumed me, and that was GG, just out-resourced me after uh, I summoned Gazelle, and he sanctumed, and that was it. It was great. No, uh, no interaction Yu-Gi-Oh! People love it. Next up, um, I misplayed hard. I had Falco in Grave and wasn't using it. Um, I forgot to extend with Mirage Stallio. There was just several, and there there was several misplays, and then there was a key moment in the duel where I totally could have won that turn and pushed through what was his very weak board and no back row, and then I didn't make the right play, and the next turn he top deck exactly what he needed, and I just lost the game from there, so I'll give it. That was the more skilled player. Shout out to, to Christian. He got me real good. Other than that, it was an awesome day trades-wise. Um, traded for a whole Mech Knight core and bought a Spiral core for $15 and probably going to bring you guys deck profiles on that eventually when I learn how to play those decks. I'd rather stick to, to what I know, but thank you guys for listening in and I'll see you all next time. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see more of this ugly mug, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Peace.